Guys, here's the latest news. We have, well, it's just come in hot off the press. We have got the privilege of chatting to Kiara Foy, a, a very well-renowned uh, dietitian and nutritionist here in Toronto. Uh, so follow me, let's go, let's have a chat. First and foremost, I guess introduce to the audience out there who do not know who you are. <laughs> Give us a little bit of a synopsis. So I'm Kira Foy, a nutritionist and transformational coach, and I do work out of Toronto, but I coach primarily women all across the world um, to really step into the best version of themselves. Sounds good, fantastic. Now, uh, you're obviously, you've, you've been around a long time, you've obviously seen a lot there, you've, you've got a range of different clients. What are you seeing right now out there in terms of what you're offering or what, what uh, the, some of the biggest problems that people are coming to you with, apart from, hey, look, I'm lacking energy, I'm not sleeping right. Um, what, is there anything out there, I mean, specific to Toronto that you're seeing a little bit of a trend, or is it all all fairly fairly similar globally, the, the problems that they're facing? Yeah, I think, I mean, one of our biggest problems, bar none, that also, you know, um, goes, works into the energy sleep pleat piece is definitely stress. Mm. And then, so how does stress impact our body? And so one of the big things that we know about stress is that it increases inflammation in the body. And most degenerative diseases are all inflammatory based. Oh, okay. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you're talking about diabetes or obesity or cancer or heart disease, mm. reducing inflammation in the body overall is extremely important. And so, your diet, what you're eating, things that are heavy in processed foods, you know, fried foods, sugar is a big one, alcohol is a big one, too much animal meats is a big one. Oh, wow. All of those things increase inflammation right. and therefore put you at greater risk for disease. Gotcha. How yeah. does, just run me through, so how does that actually work when, so I've, I've you know, uh, heard that the plant based diet does. Uh, have a significant impact on reducing inflammation yep, as opposed absolutely. to certain meats or what you said with processed food. Mm -hmm. So like why is that? Why are like sugars and the processed foods more inclined to inflame your internals as opposed to the plants that don't? Like just run, run me yeah. through that sort of. So, so the big thing with plants is that you know, um, plants have are very, very nutrient dense. So it's, you know, a lot of people, maybe the lay person thinks about food in terms of calories and macronutrients, fats, proteins, and carbs, mm. right? So, but what we need to think about a lot more and what I have people focus on is that, you know, first of all, your body has no clue what a calorie is, oh, right? Chap, just readjusting it, yeah. <laughs> Keep it, talking. No worries. <laughs> it, your body only knows, you know, do I have the right raw materials to make my cells properly? Mm. Right, And so when it comes to um, actual nutrition, all your vitamins and minerals, the phytochemicals, so those are the things that actually prevent disease, right? right? Um, phytochemicals, enzymes, etc. those things are primarily in fruits and vegetables. Okay. And so, and those things are, you know, where we get the most amount of, of nutrients to fight disease, to keep inflammation down. Um, and that's why they're so important. So gotcha. the other thing is we have to understand, like the body always wants to be in homeostasis, right? It always wants to be in balance. And so things- for the, Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. For the people that don't know what homeostasis is out there, can you just run us through that? Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's basically, you know, layman's terms, exactly what I said. So, you know, homeostasis means that your body is always trying to stay in a particular balance. So like in a pH balance, like not too acidic, not too alkaline, for example. And, and therefore, it's always fighting with, you know, to do so. Mm. So for example, if you were eating things that are more acidic, and we know that sugar, animal meat, processed foods, etc., are more right. as, uh, acidic, then your body will, for example, pull calcium from your bones, mm. right? Because that's alkaline to actually balance balance out your body if you're eating food that is too well, acidic, right? Okay. right? And that's one of the reasons why in North America, we have a much greater incidence of osteoporosis, for example, even though we take in far more calcium than countries that have a much um, uh, lesser, um, what am I saying? Lesser. <laughs> we take in far um, more calcium than countries that have a low risk of osteoporosis. Oh, right. So, for example, Japan, 
right? Well. So in Japan, they take in a fraction amount of the ca of calcium in their diet, mm. but um, they have much you know lower um, risks of osteoporosis. Whereas Interesting. in North America, it's um, really a big deal, and right. we have um, much more osteoporosis because our diet is that we um, are so much more acidic. Like if mm. you look at the standard American diet, mm. it's very much, there's lots of sugar, there's lots of starch, there's lots of um, fat, fried food, etc. cetera, mm. right? Mm. Not as much um, fruits and vegetables. And definitely another big thing in, you know, in Asia is that they don't take in as much animal protein. Right, 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 right. Right? Okay. So, so that's, yeah. yeah, so that's really important too. Okay. So. Just, just tracking back to, mm -hmm. so let's just track back to the plant base. So as we we're talking earlier that the, uh, you know, being on a, a plant based, a heavy diet, um, you are not going, or you, you're going to be less inclined to get the vitamin B12, which is deficient in a lot of plants. Yeah. How important is vitamin B12 for the human body, body to, to function adequately? B12 is extremely important and you know um, one of the places the most important um, for B12 is your brain function, mm. right? So um, sometimes for example B12 can look like vertigo. Oh my God. Because it makes people very dizzy. Wow. Um, yeah. Okay. So sometimes people might think that they have vertigo, but actually um, there's similar symptoms of low B12. Interesting. Is there a yeah. difference between vertigo and just general dizziness? I mean, vertigo is literally when it goes 180 or 360, right? Yeah. As opposed to dizziness is, yeah, feeling just dizzy, but the, the, you're, you're still neutral in terms of the vision. Uh, yeah, so I'm not an expert vertigo, on this. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never We're had digressing either. over to vertigo yeah. <laughs> now. Yeah, I'm talking about nutrition there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I understand you're not a vertigo doctor. No, that's yeah. fine. We can digress. Um, yeah. It's just one of those things that is um, is very much, I would say, like with vertigo, it's not like your low blood sugar where you're feeling a little nauseous. Gotcha. It's really um, an inability to be able to, you know, um, balance like to feel like steady at okay, all, okay. right? Gotcha, so gotcha, gotcha. it's much more debilitating than just kind of right. feeling a little lightheaded, nauseous. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. good. Um, so let's talk. Uh, let's track back to more more protein driven conversation. So that for the people that uh, that are out there watching who don't understand what a complete protein is, mm -hmm. can you just run us through what what they mean by a complete protein? So a complete protein means that it has all the essential amino acids in that particular protein. Mm. So animal proteins are all complete proteins. Uh, they all have the right animal, or sorry, um, amino acid profile. Mm. Um, however, there are only a few complete proteins in the plant world. Right, gotcha. Right? Okay. So that's, um, that's the big difference there. So things that are complete proteins, the biggest one in the plant world is soy. Right. Right. So that's number one. Um, arguably, quinoa is also a complete protein. Um, it doesn't have a large amount of protein. Like you can't, you don't consider it a protein because it's mostly carbohydrates. Mm. However, it has those essential amino acids. Yeah. Right. Okay, great. Great. Um, so what? Oh, sorry. Yeah, you, yeah. you just mentioned soy, and I just wanted to touch yeah. on it because it was prevalent to a study that I was reading recently. Uh, there's some negative news around soy. What, what's your take on, on that? What, what is, why is everyone talking about the negative impacts on soy right now? Yeah, so funny. Um, there has been controversy around soy since I started school, right? So you're going back um, well over a decade. Um, I did over 40 hours of research on soy um, for when I was doing my co-op with Dr. Joey Schulman in 2005. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and basically what I found was that there's as many studies to show that soy is beneficial as there is to show that soy is detrimental to your health. Um, and what I took away from that and just keeping on top of the research as I do on a regular basis mm. is that you want to stay away from all types of soy that is processed. Right. So if we look at, you know, um, indigenous cultures or like in Asia that have tended to use soy mm. and there have been great benefits to that in mm. some occasions, we have to look at what type of soy they tend to be eating, mm. right? So mm. they're not drinking soy milk and soy pudding and soy yogurt and soy ice cream and soy, 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 mm. all of these processed things that we have made popular in North America. Mm. 
they are mostly having um, you know tempeh mm. which is one of the healthiest versions of soy oh okay and that's because it's fermented soybean right so if you look at tempeh even compared to um, tofu and there are ways of making tofu a little bit healthier for example if it's sprouted mm. it's a little bit less processed it's easier to digest there's enzymes there that are going to help it digest better okay um, but I still recommend people to eat very little tofu, that's an occasional thing, mm. and to really, um, you know, favor tempeh. And when you look at tempeh, it's not a consistent, um, it, it doesn't look consistent the way that tofu does, right? Like if right. you cut tofu, it looks the exact same, you make little cubes of it, <laughs> it just, you know, it's very homogenous, yeah, right? Yeah, you can't differentiate yes, tofu. <laughs> exactly. Whereas um, tempeh really looks like little soybeans that are pressed together. Gotcha. Right? And it is. It's pressed soy, so it's not as processed, um, and it has been fermented. So that means that it has good bacteria in it right. that helps to, um, you know, colonate and keep our gut bacteria in a healthy state. Okay. And that is one of the most important things that, that we can do for our health. Is Very good. That. Very good. I do want to just uh, segue away from those st standard questions, but I do want to talk about the gut, gut, sure. gut brain access. Yeah. Um, well, you know, what's your take on that? You know, there's, uh, you know, latest reports saying that, hey, look, a majority of the serotonin is actually formed in your gut. Um, yeah. What's, what's your, what's your take on the gut, gut, uh, gut brain access? Yeah, it's, um, it is probably, it's my favorite area to, to research, to look at studies on. Um, when I was in school, again, like going back to 2004, when I was in school, they told us all disease starts in the gut, right? Oh, wow. um, and the really cool part is that as the years progress, more and more research comes out to, you know, solidify that hypothesis, mm. you know, that, um, yeah, everything comes back to our gut and our gut is directly connected to our brain. Oh, wow. So we have as many neurons like in our gut as we do in our spinal cord. Mm. And so our gut and our brain are always talking to each other mm. and literally what we eat um, to a large extent does determine our mental health and can have a massive impact on our mental health. Oh, wow. And, you know, I really believe, and as studies are coming out with respect to this, I mean, it doesn't matter if we're talking about studies with respect to rheumatoid arthritis or, um, you know, any type of degenerative disease, cancer, etc. cetera, mm. your gut health is responsible for over 70% of your immune system. Oh my God, wow. So if you are not paying attention to your gut, then you're lowering your immune system, which Sheesh. is then just gonna make you more susceptible to all of these diseases, wow. right? Does it start down here though? I thought, I mean, generally it would start up here, I would imagine. If you're stressed and anxious, then that has then a direct impact to your gut. You breathe faster, things are, you know, a little bit funny or out of sync down here. But that generally starts up here though, right? But then around the other way is that the serotonin starts here, which then comes up here. Well, so, the, how does that, yeah, how does that so work? there's so many different things. I mean, basically, you know, if you like how, so, Let's start with the fact that your gut, we as human beings are more, are more bacteria than we are human. Mm. So we have more foreign bacteria in us to, to the extent that it's um, approximately you have 10 times more bacteria than you do human DNA oh, wow. in your body. So, you know, and that, that bacteria, what type of bacteria you have depends on what you're eating, mm. right? And also stress and other things that can have an impact on the bacteria in your gut. But mm. what you're eating, um, pharmaceutical drugs, those types of things have a massive impact on your gut health. Right. As well as like, you know, exercise has a very positive impact on your gut health. Mm. Um, so, so in any case, we have to really make sure that we are um, helping to support the good bacteria mm. and not helping to support the more pathogenic bacteria that causes disease, gotcha. right? So for example, if you were somebody who has a sweet tooth, so when people come into my practice I'll and they say, yes. right, like, hey, I have a sweet tooth. I don't, like, I don't know how to deal with this. This is just how it is. I say to them, well, it's not exactly how it is. It's how your bacteria is. 
Mm. Right? Mm. So you're not just like born with a sweet tooth. So there's two things that make us crave sugar, for example. There's our brain and how addictive we know that sugar is to our brain. It's been compared to, you know, cocaine and all sorts of other <laughs> drugs, solicit drugs. Um, however, the other part of that is that, you know, our bacteria is living, growing, you know, it wants to survive. Mm. And so if you were eating a lot of sugar, you're <laughs> supporting bacteria mm. that survive on that sugar. Wow. Right? So that's a living thing. So mm. it is going to send you cravings mm. for sugar so that it can survive. Mm. Right? The same as any animal Jeez, or human. Fascinating, yeah. So yeah. are you born with a bacteria that is more inclined to be craving sugar? Is that how that works? It depends. Or have they developed that over time? So yeah, the type of bacteria you have is going to, and we can talk about, you know, at birth, and as there's some really interesting studies there too, um, but so it's going to be determined through so many different factors, right? So it's going to be determined through what a mother eats mm. when, she, when she is pregnant. Um, what a mother eats can have an impact on whether a child has a greater propensity for obesity, mm. for example, um, or other diseases, allergies, etc. But then... The, f the very first time that a baby is exposed to other types of bacteria mm. is when it's born. So we now know that children who are born via C-section have a greater risk of infection, they have a greater risk of allergies, oh they God, have, wow. you know, they're more likely um, even um, to have like, uh, like even autistic, those kind of things as well. Mm. The reason being is because when they are born, they are exposed to the pathogenic bacteria that is in the hospital. Right. Wow. Okay. So one of the things that increases your risk, like my first, um, I have had a home birth, and the reason why I chose that because when I looked at the studies, mm. the the risks are actually less. One of the reasons why the risk can be less is because the foreign bacteria in the hospital is way more risky than the bacteria that's already in your home that you're used to. Wow. Right. Interesting. Because you, that's where you get super bugs and all that mm. kind of stuff, mm. right? In mm. the hospital. Mm. So what they found is that when a baby goes through the birth canal, it's exposed to the mother's bacteria, mm. and that's what helps to start colonating their gut, um, which is called the microbiome. So mm. your, the collection of gut bacteria that makes up your immune system is what we call the microbiome. Right. So, um, and these studies have been so compelling is that there's now new studies coming out about, okay, so obviously C-sections are necessary, mm. um, you know, a, a, a good amount of the time, and therefore, how do we prevent these babies from being more at risk mm. to disease or infection wow, or, excellent. you know, um, asthma, those types of things, right? Mm. Um, and so what they're doing is a process, um, experimenting with a process called seeding, mm. which is basically taking the mother's bacteria um, from the birth canal and actually putting it on the baby's face around their nose and eyes so that they're exposed to it. Oh my God, wow. So, so that even though they are born via C-section, they they're trying to mimic what would happen in the birth canal. Oh my God, wow. Yeah, this so that's... Like learn something new every day. It's interesting, right? <laughs> but that very is, interesting. Yeah, that's how um, important our gut and the bacteria that is in our gut um, is to our overall health. Wow. Right? And yeah. how that sets a baby up for success yeah. because of what it does for their immune system. Oh my God. Right? Yeah, and there's such a connection there. Exactly. It's wow. the same when you, when you think about like what a baby, um, you know, if you breastfeed versus formula fed, we know that there are massive benefits. Mm. Well, if you got to look at what's in the formula that's, that's feeding the gut bacteria, mostly um, a huge percentage of formula is a high fructose corn syrup. Mm. Mm. So there's just sugar. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's also a lot of sugars Jesus, like, yeah. in breast milk as well. It is quite sweet, um, yeah. but obviously not manufactured and with all sorts of other um, health promoting. Well, there's, there's talk nutrients. through, I mean, especially you would have seen what the health and they're saying that we as humans don't actually need milk. What's, right. What's your take on that? <laughs> I, I would agree with that. There's a lot about that. Um, uh, 
that documentary that I do not agree about, agree oh, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, I the mean, cigarettes in the pan sinking with the eggs, like yeah, that, that is that was like baffling. yeah, it's kind of kind of crazy because we know obviously there's a lot of nutrients. I have no problem with eggs. Um, is, I, it, is it the yolk that's the bad part, or is it the, or the white? Egg? I don't believe that there is anything that's bad about it, but the cholesterol that some people are worried about oh. is in the yolk. Oh. But a lot of the nutrients are in the yolk too, Good right? Sure. Like vitamin A and lutein and a bunch of other great things um, are in are in the yolk. So it's you know we now know that cholesterol. Um, cholesterol is really, it's kind of like the, the fireman putting out the fire. It's not the cause of disease. Mm. Um, it's one of the things that comes in to, um, for example, if you, if you, have you ever heard of free radicals? I have, yeah. Oh, hello. Fancy seeing you here. Welcome to the show. Let's Talk Health TV, uh, proudly sponsored by Profi, a fantastic, uh, complete plant Base protein, which is just absolutely fantastic, super delicious, and uh, extremely efficient. Uh, whether or not you're in the corporate world, you, you need a, a pre or post, um, you know, gym supplement for that protein intake. This is for you. It is absolutely fantastic, and I just want to showcase how easy it really is. So uh, in there, and then over to the water sink, guys. Full cup of water. Easy as that. I have not, to be honest, come across anything that is as simple and easy as this that gives you a complete whole plant based protein. And then in we go, like that. Guys, super easy, so efficient, doesn't matter. You can take this anywhere, whether or not you're in the corporate world, go to the gym, in your car, providing you've got water, obviously, but it is just so easy. Whip it up. 20 grams of protein in each one, a whole complete protein plant based and it is just fantastic. Like that and it tastes good too, that's the best thing about it, it's all about good taste. Mm. Start the day with a bang. So, oh, I'm I talking mean, about cholesterol. Yeah, so yeah. cholesterol, I mean, they're talking about, you know, how bad cholesterol is or how bad animal protein is in general. Right. And, and so I take a very balanced approach to so these things. long couch. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I take a very balanced approach to these things. I do think you can get too much animal protein. I think it's really important that no matter what type of um, nu nutrition plan works for you, whether, uh, you know, that's you want to be vegan, pescetarian, vegetarian, paleo, et cetera, that the majority of what you eat all the time should be plants, mm. okay? Mm. So that should always be, um, like, that should never change, and then those other pieces can change if you want to eat, you know, eggs or dairy or animal meat or fish or et cetera, et cetera, mm. right? Mm. Um, what do you, so just to, uh, whilst we're on that topic, what, what do you advise as the transformation period for someone trying to limit the amount of animal products? So let's, let's take a profile where, they have literally been and, and, and so used to animal products all up until let's say 25, they decide to go plant-based. I mean, that's going to be a shock to the system, right? What, what do you advise for someone that is going through that, that transformation period? Yeah, I see a lot of people really go to being more kind of pescetarian first before they go totally plant-based. So that would mean that if you're pescetarian, you know, you would eat um, fish and seafood and that type of thing as well as eggs um, and and so and, and dairy you could also eat that so that would be one segue of doing that um, you know just taking out red meat first of all is also something I see people do quite a bit to mm. just increase their health Meat, you know meat, meatless Mondays yeah exactly <laughs> but I mean you know if somebody's working with me they're generally just eating they're eating a lot more plants. I like to see at least seven servings of fruits and vegetables every single day. Every single day? Every single day. Oh my God. Yeah. So I'm doing three, so am I, am I at fault here? Yeah, well, there was, there was a study back probably 2014 approximately. Um, I believe, yeah, so it was a study done in England, I think it was the Lancet, but I could be wrong, could be mistaken. Mm. But there was a study done in 2014 that um, showed that if you were eating seven servings of vegetables and fruit, 
to a lesser extent fruit. So you always want the vegetables to be, mm. Um, mm. you know, greater than the fruit. Mm. But if you're eating seven servings, it reduces your risk of death mm. for any reason by 40%. Mm. Just that. Oh my God. So anything. That could be cancer, that could be heart disease, that could be anything. It just overall wow. reduced the risk of death by 40%. Oh my God. So that's a super easy thing to do, mm. right? So um, that, is, that is why that's always a focus. Mm. Generally speaking, my breakfast is usually always vegan, um, unless I'm traveling and then I might be having some eggs or something. But it's definitely vegetarian, because mm. eggs would be considered vegetarian. Um, most of the time it's vegan because it's usually, I will have a raw, very minimally processed, plant-based, sprouted, fermented protein powder. Um, <laughs> Can you say that one more time? Yeah, <laughs> I know. So, because, you know, you want, if it's I don't a use a lot of supplements and powders and stuff like that at all. Right. I don't like any kind of um, smoothie that is just, you know, you get in a little package and you add water and ice and that's it. What about if it's a like a plant-based protein? I mean, there's a lot there on the market. Um, very, right. Uh, you know, and, and when you're looking at the ingredients in there, it, it is very natural. So, I mean, are, are you open to those types of supplements? or? Yeah, so I would say there's a difference between you getting like a meal replacement um, protein powder where everything that's going into that, the fats, the proteins, you know, the carbs, and all of the nutrients are all in that powder. Mm. I would instead go for the fermented, sprouted, vegan um, powder that is just protein. Mm. And then you're taking that and then you're adding in your fresh greens, your fresh fruit, oh, great. your superfoods like chia or hemp or quinoa. you know nuts, <laughs> almond butter. I don't do quinoa, but... Oh, you're not a fan of quinoa? Yeah, I know I like quinoa, just not in my smoothie. Oh, okay. Um, and, and then you're adding, you know, so you're taking, you can put in like five servings of vegetables and fruits mm. in your smoothie mm. every mm. morning. Mm. And that's all whole and fresh. Oh, wow. You're getting all the benefits of that you're getting all the enzymes all the phytochemicals so that I'm totally on board with the getting it all out of a package of powder yeah no, that I'm not, not so much yeah. so using a protein a really good quality vegan protein powder yeah is is good and then you add in your own fats your own fiber your own greens your own fruit and so how are they, that's very interesting, so how are they with the plant-based protein, are they, so is it like a pea protein or are they getting out of white, white, white brown rice or what, what, what is the, the nutrients that they're, they're predominantly using in these powders? Yeah, so there's many different ones, as you said, so you could be, it could be pea protein, um, could be rice protein, um, they'll also use um, hemp protein. Oh yeah, interesting. Yeah, so there will be a mix. And hemp. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So hemp hearts, for example, um, they're mostly a fat. So hemp hearts themselves, mm. um, you know, when you're not processing it to just pull out the protein component. Mm. Um, so I use hemp hearts quite a bit. They are high in omega-3, which is an essential fatty acid, really good for reducing inflammation. Um, and three tablespoons of hemp hearts would be 15 grams of fat, mm. but 10 grams of protein. Okay. And so good fats? Yes. Good fat. Very good fats. So yeah. monounsaturated. So um, essential fatty acids. So omega three, oh, which oh, is okay. even better. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So your omega threes are your essential fats. Your body can't make them. Gotcha. Um, and so that is why, um, particularly hemp protein is good. The same as chia also has the omega three. Flax also has the omega three. Okay. Um, so any any you know, seed that has omega-3 is always going to be better for you and that's why you hear about those being superfoods. Yeah, absolutely. Because our body can't make omega-3. Right, yeah, very good, very good. What, yeah. what is the recommended dietary intake for, for a human in regards to protein? Like, is, is there a scenario where you can have too much protein? Um, you can definitely have too much protein. It really depends on what your personal needs are. So, you know, as a, as a man who has a greater percentage of um, muscle mass, you are going to require more protein to keep that muscle mass than I'm going to for mine, right? I've so got no muscle mass if so you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you no, know, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, women women will require less than men. Women no. who are more active are going to require more to support the muscle that you know they have built, etc. 
Um, but there's definitely, you know, lots of myths around that. Like, you know, a plant-based protein powder, for example, will have approximately 15 to 20 grams of protein per serving, yep. which is, you know, what you want for a meal. Mm. When you go to like a whey protein or a bodybuilding type, really processed, like um, isolate, grams, yeah, it's uh, like 35, 40. In my opinion, that's too much. Oh, too much? Okay. Yeah. So, you know. But too much for the average human. Too I mean, much for, for, a body, for a bodybuilder, sure. I mean, he's going to need whatever he's exerting. Yes. Right? Yeah. They might need that much, but there's also, um, you know, different people are going to be able to process different amounts of protein at the same time. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. So it just kind of, those are variables for sure. Yeah. Um, but even like we used to think that if you were vegan, that you had to get a complete protein at every meal so you'd have to mix like brown rice with beans for example because if you mix those together then they form a complete protein and you're getting all of your essential amino acids mm. but you don't need that at every meal you just need complete proteins throughout the day gotcha right, right. and then your body can do um what it needs to do with that gotcha very yeah. interesting very interesting stuff well hey thank yeah. you so much for You're your uh, time i do, do appreciate it yeah. it's been a pleasure talking we've covered a range of topics and uh yeah that was fantastic Absolutely. Uh, that's uh let's talk tv uh thank you uh, so much for your time over and out ladies and gentlemen that's a wrap thanks very much cheers so guys that's a wrap fantastic head along to profiprohealth.com and uh enjoy yourself a, a complete plant-based protein thanks for your time and enjoy